guys you're welcome thanks for clicking so new scary signs of the fall of bani israel found in the ground wow so they said they saw a signs of a fall of bani israel that was found in quran and this sounds scary so let's check it out this is now another interpretation of a very classical set of verses that some many ulama of our times actually more and more ulama are uh, interpreting Surat Isra as being one of the signs of Judgment Day. And if you begin from the Surah, it starts off with the issue of Subhanallah Asra bi Abdihi, the issue of Isra, and the fact that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blessed the uh, Bani Israel and that He gave them uh, some some power in the land. Now the verses then go on. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ This is verse number 4 of Surah Isra. Okay, follow along. These are very powerful verses. We conveyed and decreed to the children of Israel in the kitab. What is the kitab here? Most of our ulama said the lawh al-mahfuz. لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ You shall cause fasad in this world twice. وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عُلُوًّا كَبِيرًا And you shall reach a degree of great haughtiness. Interestingly enough, Allah uses the same adjective for Fir'aun. إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ يَا حَفَظَ إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ عَلَى فِي الْأَرْضِ So Allah is saying the Bani Israel will have two periods of might and izza that they will abuse. Okay? فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ We shall send against you. An army will come, a group will come against you. They have great military might. They are strong قوم. They're not a weak قوم. فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ And they manage to go and probe even into your houses. They're gonna go and all the way, destroy all the way to your houses. وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا And this was a promise that indeed took place. It is a true promise. وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا Now, ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ Then, we gave you back. A karra, a new chance. And we caused you to have a victory over your enemies. And وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ We gave you blessings. You now had a civilization, children, wealth. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا And we made you powerful in numbers. Your أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا means your manpower or your strength or your military might. All of this is allowed here, right? So you became a mighty nation. إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ If you do good, it's only for yourself. You will do good. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا But if you do evil, it will be used against you. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ when the second and final time, because there shall not be a third time of power. Ya Bani Israel, Allah has decreed, you shall come to power and be a civilization twice. The first one, وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا It is a done deal. The second one, when it shall happen, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ There is a missing phrase here, and that missing phrase, we should say it is understood by the contest that Allah will send another group of people, and they will cause your faces to become sour. After they were beaming with pride, they will now become scowling with anger. Now here, listen to this. وَلِيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدَ and they shall enter the masjid. Which masjid? Ya audience. Aqsa. There's no ikhtilaf. The masjid here is not Makkah and Medina. Aqsa. Kama dakhaluhu awwala marra. As they entered it the previous time. Waliyutabbiru ma alaw tatbira. And they will destroy whatever you had taken over with your ulu. Whatever you had done, whatever you had built, whatever had been constructed with your ulu, وَلِيُتَبِّرُوا مَا عَلَوْ تَتْبِيرًا All of it will be destroyed and taken away. 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Asa Rabbukum an yarhamakum, your Lord might have mercy on you, wa in uttum udna. And if you go back to your evil ways, we will go back to our punishing of you. That's what it means here. Wa ja'alna jahannam al kafirina hasira, and we have made jahannam a place for the kuffar to reside in. Jayyid. Okay. Not a single alim ever felt that this ayah is a prediction of the future. Every alim that I have read, I could have missed some, but 40 ulama that I've read, the classical mufassirin, everyone is considering these two from the past. And why would they not? Because in their time frame, the Bani Israel, there is no hope of another nation coming. They are scattered throughout the world. There is nothing that combines them. So they read these verses, they read history, and common sense. There's nothing to make fun of, nothing to dismissive attitude. I would have done the same had I been alive a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago. That's human beings. These ulama, pretty much all of them, they said what? These two ulu have already taken place. In the past, done deal. And some said, that the first of these was the Assyrian exile of 722 BC when the uh, Assyrians attacked the remnants of the original uh, kingdom of Israel that was founded by Talut and Dawud and Sulaiman, the ones who actually uh, founded the original kingdom is Israel. One disintegrated, one remained. The one that remained was finally gotten rid of by the Assyrians who attacked them in 722 uh, BC. And then... Uh, Another group came and eventually uh, the Babylonian expulsion took place under Nebuchadnezzar, Bukhta Nasr, Nebuchadnezzar in 597 BC. So this is one interpretation that the first of them was 722 BC and the second of them was 597 BC. Others have said, and this is very popular as well, and this is the position of even some of the Tabi'un. The first is uh, the expulsion of Bukhta Nasr, because Bukhta Nasr massacred them. It was one of the main massacres of the Bani Israel, and he was uh, basically uh, almost exterminated them. Then they had to flee to various places in the world. And then uh, in the Roman expulsion as well in 70 CE, another wave took place. This is the classical interpretation, that the two have already occurred. There is a modern interpretation that a number of prominent scholars in Egypt, in Bilad al-Sham, in Palestine, a number of places, they are saying, why are we assuming that these are in the past? The Qur'an doesn't say so. In fact, the Qur'an only says one of them, وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مفعولا. The first one has taken place. As for the second, the Qur'an does not say that it has taken place. Why are we assuming it has taken place? And now you see exactly where we're heading with this, right? So the first one would then be most likely the first destruction of the temple. That was when the glory of the original kingdom completely gone. And they have never had that type of political stability up until when? We all know up until when. And so Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ We give you one more chance and you were victorious over your enemies. وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ We helped you, we aided you. You had government aid, you had the largest endowments from the biggest superpower in the world. You had everything you could have ever wanted. Right? وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا You couldn't have asked for more. With all of this, what did you do? إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ if you acted properly, that would have been for your own. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ So then when the second time comes, لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ means there's a missing phrase like we said, another group will come. And this group will eliminate the izza that you had, and you shall see that your ulu and your fasad and your evil did not help you. And you will see it and your faces will demonstrate that. Now here's the key point that allows them to make this tafsir. The group that is being referenced here, it is not alien to Masjid al-Aqsa. This group has already conquered Masjid al-Aqsa at some previous point in history. And now they are conquering it again. Who? 
conquered Jerusalem once before and wants to conquer it again. The Ummah and Umar ibn al-Khattab is the one who was the one who conquered in the first time. So this is another interpretation and it is gaining more and more traction. Wow, oh my god. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just so, so perplexed, guys. I'm so shocked that these things were written in the Quran. It's more like it's a prophecy. It's something, you know, something that was written way back and is not happening years later. It's called prophecy. That's what I would call it a prophecy because for, you know, Quran to say all these things about Israel, like the Quran said, if you attack, then you'll be punished. It's, it's just mind-blowing. I'm, I'm just, it's scary. Because I was like, ah, I'm relating to what is happening now. And I'm like, wow. See what the Quran says about this situation, this issue. So the Quran has already given the solution to what will happen if this happened. So like they said, if Israel do this, this will happen. This And oof. as in case, I'm... <laughs> Oh, this is a lot to just digest. Like, wow, 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 wow. This is beautiful. This this person that actually sat down to do his research and got to see this information in the Quran. Woof, kudos to the person because this is a lot to digest and a lot of information to know and things to let you know that, you know, Islam is really true. This, this is a powerful one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>